Hi everyone, my name is Peter. Welcome to Our Worship Sound. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up an older keyboard to control functions within Apple's main stage software. Uh, a lot of the new and modern keyboards are already set up to work with software like Mainstage. They already speak the same sort of languages. But if you're like me, you have an older keyboard that takes a little bit of investigation and extra setup to get it functioning with Mainstage. So what we're going to be covering in this video will include how to find out which controls on your keyboard can be assigned to Mainstage and which ones can't. I'm going to talk about some ideas that you can use to, to get your keyboard to ignore the messages that you want to send just to main stage. That is a good thing. Just stick with me through that. And thirdly, I'm going to give you some examples using my Yamaha S80 synthesizer. Some things I'm not going to be covering in this video include how to set up your older keyboard to a MIDI interface. If you don't already have that, there are other videos and, and sources online where you can find that information. I'm also not going to be covering how to select a different sound or patch in main stage from your keyboard. I, as far as I can tell, there is a way to do that, but I don't know how to do it, and so I'm not going to be trying to cover that in this video. And the third thing, I will not be covering how to set up your particular model of keyboard, because while a lot of the principles will be the same, the details will differ from one keyboard to the next. So with that, let's go to the computer, and I can show you some things with how to get this set up. The first thing that I'm going to have you do is download an app called MIDI Monitor. Just search for MIDI Monitor and the first result, at least in Google, is what you're looking for. So it's a small application and it's free. So go ahead and download that. Once you have it downloaded and installed, you'll see something like that looks like this. Now I have it set up um, connected to um, my keyboard through uh, a MIDI interface and these are the messages that it's getting right now. Um, clock and active sense are not messages that I want to deal with so I'm going to go into filter and uncheck those boxes and so now you you can see that those stop running through. I'm going to clear those out and now we're free to see the messages that we're looking for. The first thing I'm going to do is just to check a note on my keyboard so I'm going to, pray, I'm going to play a middle C on my keyboard and you can see that I got a note on message it's from port B on my MIDI interface and channel 1 and I played the note C3 and it was velocity 46. And I'm going to get one more message here as I lift up. It's just the note off. If I do the same thing on the, um, the small MIDI controller that I have over here, um, it's off camera, but uh, you can see there and also the drum pad on my LPD-8. Similar sorts of messages, note on, note off. Pretty straightforward. Now I'm going to start twisting knobs on my MIDI controllers. First my LPD-8 and here's uh, what we want to point out. If you look under the message column, it says control. And that's the kind of message that we're looking for is something that can be easily signed within main stage. This is um, for a MIDI, a MIDI continuous controller message or MIDI CC. And uh, that's what we're after. So uh, I can do the same thing on my M Audio 02 over here and it's generating more of those control messages. Um, so that's what we're looking for. Now if I go over to my S80, we're going to see if we can get the same sort of control messages there. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to move my volume slider. And you can see that there's nothing um, generated as far as MIDI messages from my volume slider. So that just controls the volume on my keyboard. Next we're going to look at my control sliders. Now it would be really handy if I could assign these to control main stage functions. But we're going to see here that these generate a type of message called system exclusive or six, sys x for short what this means is this is speaking a kind of these faders are speaking a kind of language that main stage is not going to understand so as nice and as handy as these would be um, these are not going to be usable within main stage so we have to move on past these we have to give up on these uh, I'm going to clear this out next we're going to go over to these knobs and these say assignable knobs so hopefully this will work so first of all let's try this one and we can see that this does generate the control messages. So these do speak the right kind of messages for main stage to understand. So what we can do at this point is go into main stage and I have just a, a, a one channel synth pad set up. This knob in the software is set to control the volume of that sound and what I want to do is map the knob A on my keyboard to this control. So I'm going to go to the layout select that knob in the layout menu 
click assign and then move the knob on my keyboard and you can see that it's successfully assigned there so if I go back to edit I can see now that the volume slider for this patch moves in relation to knob A on my keyboard so you might think that they were all set up but there's one um, one issue that we have to deal with if I'm playing it with uh, any internal sounds on my keyboard um, let me show you what's going to happen sorry that's a little loud okay now I can already tell that the piano sound is a little bit different than, than what I want. I'm going to mute the output from main stage. And you can hear that the piano sound is changing whenever I move knob A. That's because uh, even though you can't see it, if you if you were to see this, this says cutoff. And so internally, this knob is set to control the cutoff frequencies for the sounds that are coming from my keyboard. So if I want it to just control the volume of that patch in main stage, um, I've got kind of a problem and this is going to alter the sounds on my keyboard too. So what I need to do is tell my keyboard to ignore the messages that are coming from these knobs. On the S80 what you need to do is click utility and I'm going to go shift scroll to controller and then I'm going to find where it says knob A. If it'll let me go there. It's been kind of acting a little bit goofy. There we go. Knob A and you can see right now the destination is the cutoff frequency so instead of sending it to the cutoff frequency I'm going to go all the way counterclockwise so the destination is now off and I'm going to do that for knob A, uh, B, and C so I can free these three knobs up to just control sounds within main stage now um, kind of a bummer that these two do send the right kind of messages but as far as I can tell there's no way to disconnect them from what's happening internally so I can assign them to the main stage but I can't keep them from changing sounds within the S80 so I'm gonna leave those alone I'm not going to assign this within, within main stage but if I go back to my patch I can see now that these are blank and so these knobs are not sending any information to, the, to anything within the keyboard and now they're free to simply alter sounds within main stage so now I'm bringing the volume up with the patch and if I flip back and forth here, it should reset my piano, yeah. So now you can hear that my piano and my synth and my whatever other patches are unaffected by this. And this is now simply controlling main stage. So with a few steps, you can figure out if your keyboard can be used to set up uh, or, or work with main stage to control it here. Um, now the good news is, if you don't have enough knobs or controllers on your keyboard, to do this to control main stage you can add something like um, an LPD8 so you're instantly adding knobs or drum pads or whatever you have got to your keyboard you just plug in a USB cable and off you go I have mine velcroed to my keyboard so this is as good as having these controls built right into my keyboard works just as well so that's what I would recommend uh, I hope that was helpful if so uh, please uh, subscribe on YouTube and um, head over to my website ourworshipsound.com sign up for the email list and we can keep in touch that way thank you very much have a good one